welcome back to Built by Bo. Today we have our PIM computer from from Shannon at Stinger Performance. This is a PIM X, so this only does batch fire. Uh, PIM X S will do batch fire and sequential. Uh, this car is not going to be sequential, so I got the X computer. Uh, this uh, computer is about a hundred dollars less than the sequential one as well. The um, I have a Pimp XS in the Turbo Rustang, and I have a Pimp XS in the 4. I have it for the 331 Stroker in the 69. That car is sequential, so it, it needs the XS. Um, the XS will do both batch fire and sequential, whereas the X will only do batch fire. So when you get this computer from Shannon at Stinger Performance, you'll get your vacuum line, you'll get your USB cable, you're gonna get a bass tune, and there's gonna be these little pills in here. They're tiny little things. And basically you have to program the computer to tell it what it's doing. Is it a V8, is it a four cylinder? Uh, your fan control, you know, your boost control, your wide band, you know. So you put these little pills in the designation as you're supposed to. Now, on the USB drive, there'll be instructions that you follow, and it'll say if you're using this, you have to go to put your pill in this location, and if you're using this, it's in this location. So I've been through the instructions, and I've written down everything that, that I need. So um, I have five or six pills that I need to put in this computer and um, to make it work for Smokey's application. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now. They do use a Ford casing, but inside is not a Ford casing. In, inside is Pimp's computer all along. It's got a built-in map sensor. It's got a vacuum line that goes inside. So anyway, I'll open it up and show you what's inside. So this is what it looks like inside the computer. And I think the technical term that Stinger uses is a jumper, not a, I use, I use the term pill, but they use the term jumper. So you're gonna hook up the jumper. So uh, for example, as you can see, if you can see that in here, you can see that there's numbers on there and letters. So R10, R13, R12, you know, all these kind of stuff. So wherever there's these little junctions where there's pins sticking up, that's where the pills are gonna go. So we're gonna set it up as per the instructions and you can follow along if you want. So the first one it says is for a 2.3 batch fire with DIS and high impedance injectors that I need to do JP1, JP2, JP14, and JP19. So that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, so as you can see here, can you? I've added a jumper here, JP14, here, JP1, here, JP2, and here, JP19. See, these only have two pins, but these have three. So this is, in my instructions, it says pins two and three. So you can see here, there's a very small designation of one right in there, and that one means that's position one, so I'm on two and three. So that's those pins, and now I'm gonna to move to the next step. The next step is JP3 pin 55 for low speed fan control. Now my next one is JP7, which is Pin 52 for high speed fan control. My next one is JP9, which is for electronic boost control, which I'm going to hook up and run.
Okay, so that's all the jumpers that we need to run in the computer so far. So I'm gonna button it up and then we'll move to the car and start uh, plumbing some wiring for the ECM in the car. So when you put your USB drive and download the information to your laptop, open up your instructions and start going through your instructions. You'll need to do this anyway to find out what jumpers is for your application. And as you go down through the instructions, it's pretty self-explanatory as you go down through. Also, when you read through the, all the instructions, you'll find that it's gonna tell you certain things about your car. For the JP3 jumper and JP7, those are your fan control. So you're gonna to go to your ECM and you can tap into the pin 55 and the pin 52 wire, and then your pimp computer will control your fan, cooling fan that is. Now JP9 is for the boost control. It's a ground control, and then it's gonna run out to my uh, solenoid for the wastegate control and then for pin 29 it's going to be where you're going to tap in for your wideband control so those are the only things so the only the only things the only wiring that you have to change at your computer and not even change is just tap into is possibly those four wires for this application so okay so at this point all i've done is cut the wire coming out of the ecm at pin 29 and attach that to the signal wire for my AFR gauge. That way the computer can reference the AFR rating and calculate fuel and load as it needs to. So from here we're going to open up the settings of the computer and you're going to open up your instructions and you're basically just going to follow the instructions and go through the Tuner Studio as the instructions recommend. Now I haven't done this for a couple years as well so I kind of forget what I'm doing, so I'm going to have to go through the instructions as well, step by step as you would, and uh, just go back and forth from the instructions to the Tuner Studio programming the PimpXS computer for my application. It's not that hard. You just go reference the directions on one side, and then you go and follow the directions on the other side on the Tuner Studio. And then it's basically going to ask you, you need to profile the ignition system you need to profile the injector size you need to profile your dwell time just there's just certain things that um, it asks you for to go through and hook up or program into the computer should I say and then it's gonna ask you after you follow the steps if you'd like to try and start it and you're gonna check your RPM make sure you have an RPM signal and all that jazz so most likely I'll skip through a lot of the setup here because to be quite honest it's a little bit frustrating and I don't feel confident enough to explain it to you without screwing up or maybe getting possibly heated so I'm gonna just zip through this and uh, and then maybe I'll make a video at a later date when I'm more confident at and just can clearly cleanly go through and you know show the directions of how to program it So what's going on and what does happen sometimes when you're trying to do the programming is basically it's, it's asking me to reference the DIS ignition chart, which I found and when I try to change it as per the directions, it's not letting me, it's not highlighted, it's not letting me drop down the box and select what it wants me to select. So I'm getting frustrated here enough to the point where I actually shut off the camera because it wasn't useful content and then had to go and do some research so I could figure out what was going on. 
And then eventually what I ended up doing was selecting tooth wheel. And then when I went back in later, it defaulted back to basic trigger where it was supposed to be at. And then I was allowed to change the setting. So it must've been a bit of a glitch. So you will get stupid stuff like that once in a while. The saddest part of it all is I had shut off the camera, figured out what I was gonna do, and then it got to a position on the instructions where it said, you know, attempt to start your engine, the engine will not start, um, and should verify RPM. Well, I turned the key and it started. And then we got sidetracked with that and I didn't realize I wasn't recording, so that leads me to this. Welcome back to Built by Bo. Well, it starts and runs. So now we're just going to verify the timing. So we're just gonna start it up and warm it up. And I'm just gonna check and make sure that the timing, the base timing of the car matches the timing set in the PIMP XS computer.
video here for today. It's long enough. Um, we've got the timing set in the car and everything, so that's all good. Next, we're going to start plumbing the wideband and the wiring and tidying everything all up, and we'll get it out of the trailer so we can actually do some stuff outside on it. So thanks again for watching. Please like and subscribe if you like the videos. Talk to you soon.